Yeah. Have you ever read the, uh, White Man, the White Van Man column in The Sun, Carl? I've seen it. Are you familiar with this? This is where every day in The Sun they interview a guy who drives a, a van, a white van, just, you know, in order to get the kind of voice of the man on the street in the paper. Mm -hmm. And he has to answer, uh, or just give his opinions, really, on, uh, events that have made the news each week. Just thought we could maybe throw some of these at you, Carl. Because we know you to see what your, your views are. Yeah. So um, just the first thing that comes to your mind, the sort of your initial reaction to each of these. Top uh, of these, but you don't need to know about them. It's just your philosophy on it. Yeah, so just your views. You know. Yeah. I um, have a few days off this week, remember? So I don't know what's going on in the world. <laughs> yeah. You, you, I mean, you stayed in London, though, didn't you? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you, you didn't bury yourself, <laughs> yeah. did you? I normally see the news, but I didn't. This okay. Week. Um, so what are your view? What was your view on Will Young beating Gareth Gates in the final of Pop Idol? Don't like him. Do you know what I was thinking about when I was watching it all the way through? Yeah. How he looks like he's got a wire coat hanger in his gob. That sort of... Well, I guess it's radio, Carl. Radio. It's a great face. It's a funny face you're pulling. Yeah, you and, you know, but, you know, a radio. And it's, that's, that's a problem for you, is it? And, uh, and just the way he's from a really rich family. I mm -hmm. opened up the paper on the, on the Monday or something, and it had, like, how he went to a posh school and he's got loads of money already. Yeah. It's just a bit... Okay. Yeah. Right, yeah. what's the second all question? Right. Um... There have been huge rises in street crime, especially muggings and carjackings. What's your view there? More youth clubs are needed, aren't they? <laughs> <laughs> you think more youth clubs? I like that. No, I can't. I like that because it's so 1950s. Yeah, it's, it's sort of funny. like you want a bobby on the beat that'll clip yeah. you around the ear. So once they've come Is out of national service... Yeah, yeah. <laughs> no, I love that. And, and if you find someone smoking a wood bomb, you make them smoke 50. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Oh, this is great. That is great. Did, did, you, did you used to go to uh, youth clubs? Yeah. And they, they kept you out of trouble? You used to get into a fight afterwards when sure. you came out. But for the sort of hour and a half you were there. You had a bit of pool and some boxing and yeah. a bit of pop. Yeah. <laughs> so I, more, more youth clubs, that's good. I love him. Um, I love him. If you're at home, j just make notes, because this is brilliant stuff. Honestly, you won't hear more honest, from the heart exactly stuff opinions. than this. This is great. Go on. This is not pre-planned. These are your direct responses now. Oh, I, pr I promise you, Carl did not know what we were going to do. He never knows what we're going to do, and he always answers honestly. That is the beauty of Carl. What is it's your not view? an act. Well, what is your view, Carl, on New York's former mayor becoming Sir Rudy Giuliani? Sir Rudy Giuliani. Is he happy with it? <laughs> <laughs> he appears to be pleased with it. Let it go ahead. Fair enough. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Let it go ahead. Oh, he's genius. Okay. Um, is he happy with it? He's like your nan. Yeah, yeah. Is what do you make of uh, Michael Greco's character Beppe being axed from EastEnders? Uh, Problem for you? The whole soap thing. What's it's back in Croatian Street, isn't she? Uh, what's her name? Who? Bet. Bet Lins. But, yeah. She thought she'd go off and be a bigger star. Yeah. yeah. All went wrong. And now she's coming back. Yeah, yeah. always happens, doesn't Beppe it? will be back. Yeah. No one really cares. Sure, sure. Yeah. What was, was the one? van reply? What was the guy? The white what van man like? says, uh, obviously they feel the character has run his course, but <laughs> I think he's a pretty good actor and I can't understand why. So, I mean, obviously there's a, a white van man there mm. who's also got an opinion on script the, development. The through line, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, the through line of soap opera. The, the, the 12 week narrative, the, the arc really shows it's itself up. The two, two last ones I want your opinion on here. Um, what do you make of a cat that's been cloned in a secret 2.5 million research project? To find out what? If what, they can clone, clone cats, yeah. Have they had to hurt it? Sorry? Have they had to sort of hurt it to do that? Have they had to hurt it? Yeah, or is it just scraping its tongue for some stuff? <laughs> I no. think the cat's fine. The point is that they're cloning a, a, another creature which is potentially very dangerous. Have you seen that film where they bring Hitler back? <laughs> <laughs> that cat. What if that cat turned out to be a world dictator? Exactly. What do you reckon of no. cloning generally, Carl? You concerned about it? I when it's a cloning for organs, I you know, they, they just grow them for the, you know, do you know what cloning means? <laughs> yeah, it's when you, like, make something else that's the same, isn't it? Right. Yeah, yeah I mean, it's not going to do any harm. Okay. <laughs> and, uh, <laughs> that's great. And finally... Put you on the World Council. Yeah, yeah. Finally, uh, what do you make of some city workers who were caught bonking in the glass lifts of the Lloyds building? What do I make of it? Yeah. Is that a problem for you? Do you think that's unprofessional? Was it the lunch break or...? I think it was lunch break. <laughs> yeah. It's alright. Right. It's their own time, <laughs> I think, fair enough. <laughs> it only takes 45 seconds to go from the bottom to the top. Is that a problem? They moved quickly. They acted, you know, on instinct. You think fair enough? If, they, if that's their natural instincts and they're both consenting, you think fine? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Thanks very much, Carl. You, uh, do you feel that you're up to scratch on this week's news? I don't like this, but... Don't you? Don't, just relax. Why not? It's pressure. No, 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 because you just have to give us your first opinions. For your honest answer, that's all we've ever asked of you, Carl, and it's all you've ever given us. Your honest, your first from the heart. Of you, yeah? All Don't right. worry, just relax. Don't just chill in. Are you worried that people are listening and thinking you're an idiot? If my girlfriend's listening now, go and have a wash or something. 
Go and have a walk. <laughs> not very nice, is it? <laughs> it's the opposite of Napoleon and Josephine. <laughs> yeah, go on. Go on. If, if you're going to visit me again, Josephine, for Christ's sake, walk. Well, I'll ease you in with something fairly easy, a music-based question. Um, Kylie Minogue versus Dido as Queen of the Brits. What's your view there? Um... <laughs> Go and have a wash! It doesn't really matter, does it? Um It doesn't really matter. What does it really matter? <laughs> With the Brits. I was watching it the other night, and um I think Kylie will be a good looking old woman. Ah! <laughs> <laughs> okay. oh. Do you know, do you ever do oh. that sort of I wanna, people? Steve, I wanna celebrate with you. Every time we open this, it doesn't matter. I want us to open a bottle of champagne. I know what you mean. Do you know I what mean, I mean? It's yeah. like we did that. Yes. No, do you, do you, you ever do that though? Look at people and... I know the person who springs to mind, Jenny Powell. Hmm? I, I don't think she's that good looking now. Who's Jenny Powell? Is she that girl that used to be the, si the assistant on Wheel of Fortune? Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I think she's a bit over the top for a young woman. But when she gets older, I think she'll look Be a bit of a stunner. Mm. <laughs> okay. <laughs> So for you, Kylie, <laughs> whereas you don't feel that about Dido, is that right? She's all right. She's normal. I prefer Kylie's sister to Kylie. She okay. Looks, you know, she. I could imagine her being a hard work to live with. And Who, Kylie? Not doing right. really washing up and that. And right, sure. Being a bit <laughs> okay. <laughs> and what do you make of uh, taxes rising in the next budget to pay for NHS improvements? Well, my dad went to hospital to have an operation once. Yeah. So I feel like. It's worth paying it because I've, yeah. I've got some. Because people, because people might go to have to go to hospital. Yeah. Yeah. But it makes a change when it's someone in your family, doesn't it? Yeah. Because you sort of realise. Yeah, a change is as good as the rest. And the weird thing is, if it weren't for me dad, I wouldn't be here doing this show because when he was in hospital. Well, no, I'll stop you there. <laughs> yeah. To be honest, that, that's <laughs> all you need to know. You, you wouldn't be here, true, but no, but. Well, no, no, because this was after I was born, so I would be here. <laughs> but well, so for his more direct involvement was what? Yeah, because when when my mum was seeing me dad. In yes. the hospital, I got a bit bored, <laughs> went for a wander, found the hospital radio station, yeah, and got a gig. Really? So, in in a, in a real sense, if it wasn't for Carl's dad, Carl wouldn't be here. And did your dad, like, while he was listening to you, did he like sort of tap the nurse and go, "Can you get that twelve off the air?" <laughs> <laughs> Who's put him in that? App? Yeah. Oh, uh, okay. Um. What do you make of the real-life Mowgli who's surviving in a Transylvanian countryside? Apparently, I don't know much about this story. I don't know. You, you know Mowgli, he's, he's the guy from the Jungle one. Book. Yeah. The oh. little kid that grew up um, with bears and animals and stuff. Apparently there's a real-life one in Transylvania. What, what were the things in Gremlins? <laughs> what were the what? The, in Gremlins they were- Wait, 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 okay. This is an example. This is what your girlfriend said. Think, what were the things in Gremlins called? I can't remember. Just, I mean, it's really. Like that, isn't it? No, no, wait, 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 wait. Just really, really think now, Carl. Just with all, with everything you've ever, with all the brain power you've ever used, think what the things in Gremlins were called. It's not there. There's a clue here. Oh no. Yeah. They're not. What? Gremlins. Yeah. Play a record, Carl. <gasps> Good. Uh, let me see. Let me see. Let me see. Let me see. <laughs> Uh, what about the fact that the world's tallest man is living in a semi in Neasden? Uh, it's alright, isn't it? Um, <laughs> something that someone told me in the week is that, do you know all these tall people like this guy? Yeah. Which is a bit weird they've only just found him, considering he's the tallest man. <laughs> <laughs> I think that's a bit weird. Yeah, yeah. Um, <laughs> someone... <laughs> oh, someone genius. told me that, um... <laughs> Uh, Do you know the guy who was in James Bond, the big bloke? Yes. Jaws. Jaws. He's got the same illness as this bloke. Right. And what it is... It's called it's, Tall. It's something about... You're suffering from Tall. He's got a, a small tumour or something just behind this part of your head. Yes. So oh, yeah. Just, just sort of in, in the middle of your eyes. Yeah. And, and the pressure on that makes you grow really tall or something. Yeah. So he needs to get it sorted. <laughs> That's your advice to him. Yeah. Get it sorted. Okay, very finally, uh, Carl, this is important. This is, um... Just projecting into the future. <laughs> Just projecting into the future now, Cayman. <laughs> Apparently, global warming yeah. will bring sizzling summers and weird wildlife to Great Britain in the future. Are you worried about that? Um, how soon? Soon enough for you to worry. Yeah, it's pretty worrying. Okay. Um, you don't. You wouldn't prefer it to be sunny here all the time? No, because with hot weather comes weird spiders and that. See, I always think we're quite lucky here. Yeah. If you live in Australia, you might have the sun and stuff, but you've got like deadly snakes. Yes. Yeah. Which are deaf. Did you know snakes are deaf? Snakes are deaf? They don't have ears. Okay. Um, so you're alright 
walking about behind them. Yeah, but if they see you ahead of you, you know. you're in trouble. But yeah, with, with places like Australia, you know, people go, oh, it's great, it's sunny, but they don't talk about the spiders and they keep the spiders the lizards yeah. and stuff. Quite. So I think we've got a bit of the both the best worlds. So you're worried though about in the future, the vultures flying through the sky, we've got various creepy crawly snakes, you yeah. concerned about that? Yeah, well there's a load, I saw something in the news in the week that a load of sparrows or something was somewhere. Maybe that's the start. <laughs> that's an interesting story. <laughs> yeah. Was that front page or? <laughs> <laughs> there's a load of sparrows somewhere. Yeah, <laughs> Read all about it. Sparrows somewhere. Some sparrows somewhere. Sparrows somewhere. Load of sparrows somewhere. <laughs> sparrows somewhere. <laughs> Apply it to Carl Pilkington. I Carl. I much news again this week. You've not seen much news. Don't worry, I'm sure you have an opinion on just it. Just have you, just g give us it from your heart. So gladiator. Okay, so, well, on the subject of gladiator, what do you make of Russell Crowe's appalling behaviour at the BAFTAs? This is, um, I heard a bit about this. This is, um, when he, he got some director or something, because... Director or producers threatened him, because they cut his bit, didn't they? they yeah, they cut a poem that he'd done during See, the acceptance speech. I, I watched it on Sunday night. Sure. I didn't realise it wasn't live, to be honest. Yeah. But um, I quite liked the way it was to the point and didn't mess about. It was, he went up, he said thanks. So you're saying that he shouldn't have beaten up the uh, director? <laughs> Is that uh, what you're basically saying? It's a bit over the top. You thought I so? I mean, <laughs> if you didn't have time, if you really, I mean, what's what's the poem got to do with the the film anyway? He, he was an awards. So do you think it's ever justified to beat up a TV director if you're a major Hollywood star? Depends what he's done, but I mean... <laughs> right, what would you have to have done, Carl, for it to be fine for him to then beat him up? The thing is, right, forget all the beating up. At the end of the day, it was a awards thing for a film. The poem had nothing to do with the film. Yeah. So go up, collect your award for that thing. And if you really, really wanted people to hear about this poem, he could have photocopied it and sure. left it at the entrance and said, on your way out, this is a really nice poem, pick one up. <laughs> <laughs> no, but the thing is... He knew it was televised, so he knew by saying that poem once, he was reaching five million people. That's a, not, that's a lot of photocopies. Do you see what I'm saying? I'm yeah, not saying he was justified. It wasn't, it wasn't a poem award. If it was a, an award <laughs> show for poems, you'd say you can't cut it out. It'd be like doing the top 40 and then going, number one's good, but we haven't got time for it. But, <laughs> but it's a films thing. Okay. And he went up and he got the award for the film. Which film was it see, for? I don't know, but when I wanted to give you a result, I said, I said, let's give Carl his results. Steve went, no, we should introduce people to Carl again, just remind people what Carl's like. And he's so right. I'm so glad we did this first. <laughs> I'm alright, though. Or Carry I'm on, wrong. Steve. Okay, the next, uh, the next topic, um, what about this big debate over whether Kylie Minogue has had a bum job? I'd have to see it. <laughs> <laughs> next! <laughs> okay. Uh, what do you make of Will Young's single? He's the pop idol winner. Uh, it's going to uh, net record-breaking sales, apparently. It's going to yeah. go straight to number one. He's had millions of copies sold. I heard last week that you had to, um, <laughs> if you wanted to buy it from Woolworths, you had to go in and put a pound down to guarantee you're getting a copy. Wow. I think that's stupid. But what do you make of it, though? Do you think... What, um, as a song? As Both as a song, and do you, are you excited about Will Young and his future? No, it'll do all right. I don't think we we have to worry about him. Okay. It, it'll, yeah, it will do all right. It's not my thing, but he seems like a nice bloke. Okay, good. really good. Um, what one do you final make? One. Yeah, one final one then. Um, what do you make of our scientists getting the go-ahead to clone embryos for research? We have discussed cloning before, and obviously there's uh, the pros and cons of that. Christopher Reeve, former Superman star, he's behind this. Are you behind him? Yeah. I mean, with everything, you have your good and your bad, don't you? Yeah. At the end of the day. Uh, if you didn't have bad things in the world, then you wouldn't enjoy the good things. I think, you know, it's like if you didn't have robbers in the world, policemen wouldn't have a job. So it's the same thing. It's like, it's an illness, yeah? So what, 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 what are they messing with? It's probably a bit too detailed to go into there, really, but, um... Do you know what I mean? Yeah. It's, it's good and bad. You can't have it all. Yin and yang is what you're saying. Yeah. Big news stories. Uh, what do you make of Olympic ski hero Alan Baxter testing positive for drugs? What did he do? Well, he won a gold medal in the Olympics, and For he what? he was a ski, he was a skier, right. and he won gold medal, and uh, they've just tested him positive for uh, some kind of illegal drug. But what? I mean, if he did, why take drugs to ski? <laughs> why? Because all you do is balance. But imagine it'd be amazing if you were stoned, like going down a hill. Yeah, it's not like you have to. It's not, not going to help you. No, it's, it's just like... gravity that's doing all the work, isn't it? With skiing. Yeah, but it's often to do with your uh, athleticism, isn't it? It's no, but it'd be like saying, and we've just found out the people on the toboggan were on crack. 
It's not. It's not going to help them. You, yeah, sit, you sit there and you go with the flow. Yeah. And you can try I, can, and I, can I say? Can I say you, the, the, the drugs Apparently he was taking? That's his defense, probably. The, it, it, it wasn't. It probably wasn't jacking up H or you know dropping a few E's or getting stoned. He was probably taking more sort of uh, you know, performance enhancing drugs as opposed to him just like scoring some shit around the corner but, from someone, getting mean, off his tits and jumping in a toboggan. <laughs> doesn't mean that, does it? He wasn't, yeah, he wasn't <laughs> off his nut. Yeah, yeah. Uh, you have, you have, uh, you tested you, you pissed out your head. But why don't he just say, don't be stupid, why would I do that? It's not going to help me out. But it is, isn't it? Because, uh, performance enhancing drugs do. Wait a minute, Steve, wait a minute, Carl. Right, look at this way. Okay, look at me, yeah. I've got, have I got his attention? Yeah, the, 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 the lights glinting off your ring there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Tragedy. Okay, right, no, keep concentrating. Right. Some athletes, you're aware they take drugs, that's to build up Swimmers muscle. Swimmers and stuff. <laughs> yeah, swimmers. Runners. Example, runners, yeah. No, not only do they help build muscle, right, but they, they can actually, you know, give them a boost performance while yeah. they're sort of like steroids and all, all this sort of stuff. Right? So that's the sort of thing we're talking about, okay? Right. So again, he, was, he wasn't on a bomb before. You? What? Why would that help you when you all you've got to do is balance on skis? <laughs> not uh, when you're at the Olympic level. Yeah. There's a lot to do with you know your body and no, your legs. It's practice, isn't it? It's like if you, if, if you've skied for years, then you've got good balance after a bit. Oh, okay. you know what, Carl? Do you know what? You've made a mockery of drug taking. Well done. Yeah. Right, next one, Steve. I hate this bit. I hate this. Um, I don't know if you saw it. What did you make of Posh Spice's Warts and All documentary? <laughs> yeah, I saw a bit of it. What did you make of it? Uh, I mean, people are slagging him off, aren't they? Saying, you know, she's daft and that, but... Daft, <laughs> mate, you! She's... <laughs> I, I think they're alright, honestly. Yeah, you know, right. She's alright. I mean, I think David's really a decent bloke. Sure. Um, Would you uh, agree that he's quite a simple man? Yeah, but he's a footballer, he doesn't need to be, you know what I mean, it's like me. Yeah. Like, you know, alright, I only got an E in history. <laughs> but knowing about the Tudors doesn't help me press these buttons and put the next CD on. No, sure. Do you know what I mean? <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. So, good luck to him, and he's done well out of it, and it's just yeah. jealousy. Yeah. I remember, though, um, when, I was, when I was back in Manchester, I was in Piccadilly train station, and he was there, right? Not as big a star as he is now, yeah. back then, but he was stood there, and I, I was so close to going over to him and saying, did you go to my school? Because I recognised his face, oh, but I no. didn't know who he was. Do you know when you sort of go, sure I went to school, it's not the one with the big head. Yeah. But I do recognise him, then my girlfriend got off the train, and I said, I'm sure I know him. She said, yeah, it's David Beckham. And I was oh, so close to Oh, thank God for your girlfriend. Over. Does she, she, she get, get an awful lot of scrapes, does she? <laughs> she does, yeah. <laughs> okay, um, what about the fact that uh, the pension crisis sure. is going to force Britons to work into their 70s, Carl? You might have to carry on working into your 70s before you can claim a pension. I think it's a good thing. Because um, you see a lot of old people who look bored. <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> and I honestly think if you, you keep, if you keep your brain busy, yeah. you'll live longer. Yeah. It's only when you actually shut down, right, that that's when your body sort of dies because it, it doesn't feel it has a purpose. Yeah. It's like if you've got flu, mm. keep going to work. If you have a day off, you just feel worse, you'll mope about at home, doesn't do you any good. What about, wh where do you draw the line there? What if you, say, lose a finger? Pop into work? Um, depends. If, if you can't concentrate because it's painful. But right. what if you're a typist? <laughs> you're not going to type as many words, but you, you'll do more at work than you would having a day off at home. Sure. Okay. Um, Tony Blair turning trendy with his uh, Paul Smith designed naked lady shirt. I don't know if you've seen this, it's the one mm. with the uh, pictures of naked ladies on the cuffs. And... You know, I mean... Okay. Um, and finally... Uh, that, you see, this is what annoys me about this feature. It's just, what's that? So what? Yeah, but it's the, pres it's the Prime Minister of this country wearing a trendy shirt with naked ladies on the cuffs. Alright. <laughs> okay. And uh, finally, what do you make of the fact that Top of the Pops have banned uh, Will Young singing both tracks uh, on the number one slot, and uh, consequently he wasn't on there at all, they had to show the video. The first time anyone's ever made this demand. He wants to sing both the A and uh, B side. Well, he can't. It's, it's double A, yeah. Double A side. That's well, what he wanted. That yeah. is how it works, is it? Yeah, I agree, yeah. And the thing is, which one... I mean, at the end of the day, loads of people have bought it, haven't they? And it's yes, like one of yeah. the best... So it doesn't really matter what it does, because people have got it, they can listen to what song they want at home. It doesn't matter about what Top of the Pops do. Yes. And it, it's just annoyed me now. I don't, it's... Who's annoyed you? Th this... Th just what goes on in the world. I'll tell you, you're better off not knowing. <laughs> I, I, it's better being in my little world. If that's what people are talking about on the streets and asking the white van man, do you know what I mean? 
I think you're right, Carl. I think you're right. But this time, the white van man in the sun this week is Herbie Crossman from Harrow and Middlesex. Um, Herbie, and he's been he's asked asked his opinion, Carl. And what's yours on pop idol Will Young admitting he is gay? Come Um, on, Carl. It's I don't understand what the big deal is to be honest. Talking to different people about it, and they've said, oh, it could affect the sales. You know, girls won't like him anymore, which I think is. Is rubbish. Yeah, because it finished George Michael's career, didn't it? Well, yeah, and I was thinking when I was growing up, right? And, and Freddie Mercury. I was into uh, Kim Wilde, right? Sure. Now. And her kids. You're not going to tell me she's gay, are you? No, but if she was, if they said, oh, she's, she's you know, a, a leather. Yeah. Right? Mm. I wouldn't say, right, that's it, I'm taking kids in America back to the shop, I'm disgusted. Sure. I liked her. Yeah. I, I don't think I'm ever going to, like, meet her and, and marry her and that, so what does it matter? Yeah. Will Young, she's a good voice. He's gay, you know. A lot of gay people in the world. Georgia boy was gay, I guess. There you go. Nothing more and nothing less. The kindest guy I ever knew. So Do your bi- Bowie. <laughs> <laughs> no big deal. That's one of your favourite songs, isn't it? Brilliant. Killing a Georgie parts one and two, isn't it? Yeah. Okay, um, what do you make of the police protesting to Parliament over reforms? That's not the band. Before you say. Right, wh- what's all that about? <laughs> Okay, well, the police have uh, had various kind of gripes and grumbles which they've taken to Parliament, trying to get them sorted. Like what? Well, it could take ages, basically. They, they don't like the pointy helmets anymore. Yeah. They want flat caps. They feel that their, um, they, you know, they, their powers are restricted, they get a lot of bad press, they're not being paid well. They they're actually, they're they're, they're, they actually um, demonstrated, didn't they, outside? I think they may have done, yeah. Uh, uh, well, at least they're doing something about it instead of just sitting there moaning. <laughs> you know what I mean? Okay. They're, go- they're going to the top, trying to sort it out. Yeah. yeah. I admire that. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah. What yeah. do you make of the police generally? Are they doing a good job? Um, they've woke me up a f- couple of times at about four in the morning when I was a kid. Right, was that because they were looking at, they That's were looking right. for your brother in his tank? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, did this Sherman tank just come through here? Yeah. No, my mates nicked cars and gave my name and all that. Right. <laughs> were they friends of yours? <laughs> <laughs> right. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, um, what do you make of fears that dumped Britney Spears, she's been dumped by her boyfriend, there's worries that she may be cracking up, Carl? <sighs> You what, what, what are the signs? Uh, well, uh, I'm not entirely sure. I'm just reading from this section, but I would assume that she's obviously showed signs of depression, maybe. She'll be all right. I remember, like, you know, <laughs> Z- Zoe Harris, when she sort of got bored of me when I was a kid. Yeah. Get over it. I don't even think about it now. <laughs> 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 what, uh, and how long did it take you, how long did it take you to get over <laughs> Zoe? Zoe Harris! How long did it take <laughs> you to? To be honest, right, it was like one of my first girlfriends, and she was a pain. I remember, I went out with her because she wouldn't stop hassling me, right? Yeah. And I remember- <laughs> I that, that, I never that. That. Oh, go on then. I never talked to her, and then, the <laughs> bit that really got me in, I thought I half liked her, and then I remember, right, we were at a school party, sort of infant school. <laughs> <laughs> infant school? Right. Are you sure it wasn't junior school? Well, it's on the cusp, yeah. right, when you're about to leave infants and go yeah. to the next one. Yeah. And, um, she was crying because- You were saying, I don't think we should move in together. <laughs> <laughs> he was crying. She was crying. Oh, oh, was well, she? Had you she stolen her milk? She must have been nearly six. Why didn't she grow up? No, so she, was, she was crying because somebody had stood on a dress and put a bit of an hole in it. And I said, oh, for God's sake. <laughs> I can't stand it. Oh, so God. You, <laughs> I just think him. So you gave her a slap? I just think of him, like, six, like, with clogs and a flat, flat cap going slightly bald. Going, for yeah. Christ's sake, woman, come on. <laughs> oh, light my pipe. Oh. That finished it, because all the mates were saying, come on, Carl, she's upset. And I was like, oh, whatever. <laughs> oh God, no! Wait a minute. What do you mean all the mates were saying, look, come on, Carl? They were six, weren't they? Yeah, but they were saying, come on, she's crying. Help her out. And, like, and you did nothing. I don't. I she got, got injured. <laughs> got all in a skirt. Yeah, but she was upset, and you were her boyfriend. Well. So what did you do? Tell me the story. Where were you? Work out. You were at some kind of school do. <laughs> there was a hole That's in her dress. It didn't work out. He said. <laughs> I don't, do you treat your current girlfriend in the same way? This callous disregard for someone's uh, current His current yeah. girlfriend does not tread on her dress. Does yeah. she? Huh. Oh, she didn't so, know, as far did as she? you're concerned, what was her name? Sarah? Zoe. Zoe Harris. You just felt like, well, you know, if she's gonna make a whinge about, you know, a silly little hole, screw her. Yeah. You're all, you're all heart, Carl. What would you have done? I'd have gone over there and given her a lovely kiss. No, you wouldn't. Yes, we I would. We were playing dead arm. Ask <laughs> <laughs> oh, another question. Okay, very final, oh. um, thought then. Uh, 
What do you say to the fact that judge, a judge who's decided that uh, we, the general public, have a right to know about uh, stars' flings? Basically, this is an excuse. This is basically saying, should papers be allowed to print tittle-tattle about celebrities? Oh, this is... Providing it's proven true. Oh, this, this is something about, isn't it, a Division One football or something? It's definitely out of, of uh, premiership football, it's unfair. And it is true, but he's trying to keep privacy. And the judge said, well, it's not for us to censor the press over things that are true. Yeah. It's up to the general public to either boycott or not, you know, that, that publication. What do you think, Carl? What about all this, you know, exposing, uh, going through the, uh, you know, the bins of celebrities? It's not right, is it? But no. people are uh, interested in, in it and buy the papers to read it, do you know what I mean? I mean, like I said to you the other week, everyone has to go at Beckham for not being that bright. But at the end of the day, he's a good footballer. It doesn't really matter what goes on yeah. off the pitch, does it? Do you yeah. know what I mean? Yeah. So but what if you were I a celebrity and they sort of splashed over the front page the fact that you just, you know, didn't care less for Zoe Harris because, yeah. Yeah. and her torn dress? Zoe Harris is still upset. Yeah, they dug her out, you know. The night Carl Pilkington reduced me to tears. <sighs> nah, I haven't done anything that bad. Sure. I wouldn't be worried. Did you win the dead arm contest? No. <laughs> I was thinking about that the other day. Do you think there's a chance I could get blood clots in later life? Did you play that a lot? Yeah, a hell of a lot. Did you ever do it, but like, kind of headbutting? No. Okay. Because that would have explained something. Dead arms. Sure. Any more? No, that's it, Carl. Um, it it was with do. people's blessing, was it? You had to give them a go? Yeah. And you played it with girls? No. Alright. Oh, with my mates. Right. So oh, you okay. were playing dead arms while she was off dancing and getting her hole ruined? Yeah. <laughs> you romantic, you. That's great. <laughs> and you haven't changed a bit, have you? You still do that to this day, don't you? At functions and events. <laughs> <laughs> oh, dear. Quarter to two, I'm Ricky Gervais, Steve's got the sun. Yes, I'm He's gonna, we're white just going to be doing Van White Van Carl, where we ask Carl the questions the sun asked some other bloke. That's right. Because we think Carl's got more to say than anyone on anything. Yeah. Carl only tells the truth, by the way. Just remember that, listeners. Off you go. Yes, um, well, today's White Van Man in the Sun is John Slade. He owns his own door maintenance company. <laughs> um, his, uh, his answers are very informative, I have to say. But, Carl, what do you make of uh, the Channel 4 producer, aged 30, who duped a school into believing he was a teenager for a documentary? Are you familiar with this story? No, go on. Well, basically, a 30-year-old guy kind of fooled the school into, um, into thinking he was a pupil for a, a secret documentary. The school's outraged. Do you think that that's, uh, you know, any, for you, you know, should anything go when it comes well, to making TV? I think I've said to you before, um, there's loads of kids at my school. I remember being in the first year and kids who, what, did, what year do schools go up to? <laughs> I was in the first year, what, what is it? Eleven. Five. Oh, sorry, first year of infants and juniors. No, secondary school. Eleven. Right, year eleven. Um, kids no. have beards and no, stuff. No, not year eleven. They're 11 when they first go to secondary no, school. No, right, well I'm 11, the kid's at the, uh, at the older well, end. Well, there's a well, fifth form and then there's you can a leave when you, you can right. leave when you're 16, I think, can't you now? Right, well kids who were 16 yeah. looked old. They, had, they, they did have beards. I remember going there and thinking some of them were teachers. I think he's answered that. Next one, what's the next <laughs> <Yep>. one? <laughs> Tattoos and everything. Um, I think uh, kids in the, in the earlier years, even. What do you make of the fact that Mariah Carey's £38 million pound payoff has cost EMI staff uh, their jobs, and we're talking 1,800 EMI staff who have lost their jobs. What do you think of that? Yeah, I mean... I mean, is that silly money, Mariah Carey, on 38 million? She doesn't need that much. She doesn't need that much. <laughs> she has to dress nice, though. It's not her fault. I'd say, um, <laughs> it's bad business. Okay. Because uh, EMI, did you say? Yes. Right. They've got rid of them, them staff. Yeah. Mariah Carey's left. Who's going to do the work? <laughs> <laughs> you think, do you think Mariah should come back and do some temping? Well, they should have, they should have got a loan and paid her. Okay. Do you know what I mean? Vicious circle, that. <laughs> right. Have you, have you done, you've done a business degree or anything, have you? Commerce. You did commerce? Yeah. What, where, where did you do that? What did you do with that? In school, I'd, I'd learn how to fill out a cheque, <laughs> pay a bill, and uh, I think I, I had a trip round Kellogg's. <laughs> Did you, uh, did you get, uh, did you get an O level or GCSE? Uh, we know he didn't. You know. Uh, but was, uh, was there a commerce exam or was it just a division of maths? Remember. Well, did he fill out a was check? It a subset of it maths. It was an option, it was like, if you want to do it, you can what do it. What was it? Fill, fill out, out a check, check fill pay, out a bill, pay a bill, pay a bill, have a visit right to Kellogg's. I met Kellogg's and I saw my sister's boyfriend there at the time, he sorted me out with some variety packs. Really? What was in them? You know, Rice Krispies and... Good stuff. Cocoa Pops? Space. 
dust or whatever it is. Space dust. <laughs> so, sorry, that wasn't Ken Dodd, though. No. <laughs> that was someone else. That was an aunt. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that wasn't Special K. Oh, dear. What about this then? Home Secretary David Blunkett admits that muggers rule some streets. Um, weird this, because when I was out with you... I don't was... believe it's going to be weird, whatever you say, no, Carl, go we, on. when we were in that pub that night and we got talking about muggers and that, the tip is, um, what I tend to do, because I nearly got mugged once, act You mental. what? You nearly got mugged once? I nearly got mugged. Yeah. But I, but I tried this technique <laughs> of acting a bit mental. <laughs> right, and how did you act mental? Well, this guy wanted me trainers. And uh, I was in Piccadilly Gardens in Manchester, it was quite late one night, mm -hmm. and he came up, he said, uh, I want them trainers. I said, you want them? I said, I worked hard for these. He said, how dare you come to me asking, and I, I got a bit livid, and I <laughs> he, looked at, he looked at me like, oh my God, he's got a right one here, and he left me. Were you acting mental, or were you just mental? No, I, I put it on a bit. Were you not tetra petrified, though? Well, you don't think about it, do you, when you're sort of in the eyes of danger? <laughs> well, not you. Clearly, you're a brave man. So, what did you say? <laughs> I, ju I just, I just went, I just went a bit mad. I just kind of, because he said he wanted the trainers and they were dear ones at the time. And uh, I just, no, you're not having these. So I've crafted. You, I said I wanted these trainers. Yeah. And you know, went on to tell him how I work out of printers and I don't enjoy it. And you know, I put in all these hours and that, and I have to cycle home for about five miles. And I did he give you his trainers? <laughs> yeah. Did he have a knife? No, I just left. No, it didn't get that. Didn't get that violent. Well, that's very brave of you, Carl. Yeah, it's that's good. good advice though, just that mental. Um, uh, See, what's it should he try it the other night? Oh, Liza Minnelli? Yeah. Well, she says, oh, well, I've worked hard for these diamonds. <laughs> yeah. It's not easy being the daughter of Judy Garland. You don't know what it's like. Uh, finally, uh, apparently um, there was a crook that got a job, a security job at Heathrow. Right, he was a crook and he got a job at Heathrow. Crook. Uh, as robbers steal another two million pounds. Apparently security down there is lax. Yeah. Is that a concern for you? Is this another Yeah. Two million? Yeah. Why why is all this money at the airport? <laughs> um, it's those sandwich shops. You know how they're really expensive, the sandwiches in like when you get <coughs> plain. They're like two pound fifty for tuna, which is ludicrous. Yeah. That's basically the reason. What do you mean why is all this money at airports? What what is it doing there? Why is have it a go, have a go. No, have a go answering this yourself. Why is anything at an airport? It's going somewhere. Or coming in from somewhere. Yeah, but money, you can sort it out through the bank, like phone banks and that. Have you done commerce? You know a lot about paying bills and writing out checks. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Tell us about Kellogg's. What was uh, it like? What, what was in the factory? Was it just like squashing bits of corn? And pretty boring, really. Just loads of conveyor belts. Um, yeah. Boxes of cornflakes everywhere, just what you imagine. Yeah. I so is it more, this is where you it. might be working? <laughs> this is where you're likely to work. Possibly. There was two trips. There was that and the trip to Manchester Evening News. Okay. And I, I left that early because I had a job in um, Cordon Bleu. In Kellogg's. <laughs> <laughs> Cordon Bleu, what's that? It's like so a supermarket. Yeah? And I, I had to leave the trip early and the teacher went mad saying uh, they thought I'd got lost on the, you know, in the building and stuff. What, you didn't tell right anyone? No, because I w it was like day two of working in this supermarket and I couldn't be late. I thought by the time I explain where I've got to go and everything, it'll, I'll be even later. Sure. So I just left, and then apparently they were searching the building and everything for me. How old were you? Stuck in a printer. Um, <laughs> don't know. Stuck in a printer. I don't know. I don't what was the printer's name? <laughs> Good to that because we, I mean, we only care about one person's opinion in the in the, in the country now. That's true enough, he's the came man, and there he is. There he is. Right. Carl, your thoughts, please, on. Kylie Minogue slagging off Britney Spears for ignoring her fans at her premiere. Are you aware of that story? No. She, uh, she got booed at her uh, premiere of her new film, Britney, because she, uh, she'd she left her fans waiting for like an hour. Some of them had travelled up from Bristol, other parts 3, of the country. 3,000 of them. Loads of them screaming for her. She just was, went straight into the theatre an hour late, just gave them a quick wave and straight in. Didn't even want to shake and sign any autographs. So they were booing. What do you think of that, Carl? And Kylie's obviously said that was actually outrageous, you know, and uh, you should treat your fans with respect. What do you make of it? Um... So she did wave. Like. Yeah, but literally as she was walking into the theatre. <laughs> was it raining? No, I don't think it was. Uh, he's like a defence lawyer. Yeah. <laughs> but who hasn't really read the brief. <laughs> so <laughs> no, I was just like just winging it. Judge, so first joke, was it raining? No. <laughs> oh, shit. I was, I was relying on that. Uh, <laughs> um, was she oh. running late for the start of the film? Yes, but that's her own fault. I mean, the people are inside. They're not going to start the film without her. It's Britney Spears. 
Yeah. She could take some time out. You know, when uh, Tom Cruise came here, he spent like an hour and a half shaking people's hands, talking to people on their mobile phones, all sorts. That's Tom Cruise. He's a bigger name than Britney. I know, but... It's, uh, it's he's a smaller like, person, but he's a bigger name. What, what <laughs> do people want from people? Do you know what I mean? Yeah, An point. autograph, things like that, a photo. This one's going nowhere, Steve. Is there yeah, another one? Fair enough. <laughs> I'd, I'd, yeah, I'd, I'd, you know, it's not bad. If she had more time, she might have done it. I bet she would have done it on another day. I mean, I'm not feeling too good today. I mean... <laughs> But you're gonna still take time out to sign people's autographs, surely, when you leave the building. Yeah, there's always a bit of a crowd, isn't there? Next. Go on. Uh, what do you make of, uh, a New York's, a New York's ex-police chief saying we need more bobbies on the beat? He's come over here, he's the guy that sorted out crime in New York City, he's come over here, he said, you're going all over the place here, mm. you need more bobbies on the beat, not more policemen, more, a visible police presence. There was, there was something last week about, um, <laughs> some copper in London who was sat on a, sat on a bench, mm. uh, and he was asleep or something. Oh, yeah. And people were like outraged because like he, he should be looking after you know England's people, not nodding off on a on a park bench, which is a bit daft. Because <laughs> they were shouting he should be looking after England's people. <laughs> yeah. well, you know, is that, looking so after England's was this, people. Hey, was this the sixteenth century you went back to? <laughs> what do you mean he should, he should be looking after England's people? You know, wherever he was, if he was in like a park somewhere, yeah. they, were, like, they were like really annoyed because he was asleep. But sure. He'd probably be undercover. If it, well, no, but the thing is, if there would have been any trouble, I'm sure he would have woke up. Yeah. If there was any sort of, if someone needed help mm. and he screamed, he would have woke up. So I don't know why they were having a go at him. Yeah, and, and know, he might not, he might not have been there at all. So you know, it was, you know, so yeah. he, he probably have his radio turned on, didn't he? Yeah, listening to Heart. So you're not concerned then that there's not that the, the crime's going I up. I think there's and enough. I see quite a lot of them whizzing around. Okay, you're, you're yeah. happy then. Yeah. As long as you're happy, Carl. So you don't think it's too much crime? No. Just the right amount. Just the right amount of crime. Yeah. What yeah. about the fact that uh, new gambling laws give Blackpool the green light to become a British Las Vegas? What do you make of that? Are you a gambler? A little bit when I when I go on holiday, I like going in the arcade and having a little flutter. Sure. Um, What's your favourite? I have to go on the, you know, the fruit machines. Yeah. There's a good one called the Simpsons. <laughs> right. Is that um, your favourite? Yeah, it's quite good. Is that a tie-in with the TV show The Simpsons? Yeah. Okay. Um, will they make Blackpool the next Vegas? I don't think so. No, I don't see it happening. No. You've been to Blackpool? Yeah. What was it? Was it it's, a, it's a bit rank. Is it? It is a bit rough. Okay. Needs a needs a lot of work doing on it. Yeah. Uh, no, that won't happen. Okay. And you're not worried about this encouraging gambling generally? You, you, gambling's not a vice you're concerned about. Uh, if you're a gambler, you, you're a gambler. Do you know what I mean? If yep. if Blackpool isn't done up, they'll go somewhere else to have a flutter. Sure. So it's not going to make any difference. Okay. No. Okay. It's <laughs> really good. And uh, what do you make of the So Solid crew's Ashley Walters being jailed for 18 months? Obviously not a very good example to uh, his young fans. He should have got more. Do you think? I had a dream about him the other night. Go on. About, about the group itself. Okay. I had a dream that... Were they all there? Because there's yeah, a lot of them. I, I couldn't remember all their faces. <laughs> the um, feature in a dream. I had a t-shirt on. <laughs> he had etc. <laughs> exactly, yeah. 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 He had etc, yeah. I had a t-shirt on. You had a t-shirt on? Yeah, and it said on my t-shirt, so solid poo. And I was walking down the street and they came towards me. Wow. That's a great dream. That's amazing. That's an amazing I love that. That's, we've all had, 30 year old. We've all had that anxiety dream. <laughs> <laughs> oh my goodness. What oh if no. I meet the So Solid crew and I'm wearing oh a t-shirt that slags them off? Oh, I don't believe it. Yeah. You know, yeah. So what happened? Did you get beaten up in the I, It was one of them where I woke up. Do you know I've been telling you that I keep getting them things where you, you feel like you're falling? Oh yeah. yeah. It was the same sort of thing. It's you like, know I'm not a real psychiatrist, don't you? You should, you know no, what I mean? You, you do know a lot about a lot. Yeah, I do. Thanks very much. And, you know, if I'm at home talking to Suzanne about something and, and I don't know the answer, I think, right, I'll ask Ricky that one yeah. soon. Yeah. yeah, thanks. But you know that, th I think you might mention before that apparently if you uh, die in a dream, it means that you're dying in real life. Yeah, yeah, well that's it if you don't. But apparently uh, if you get beaten up by the So Solid crew <laughs> in a dream, it means you're being beaten up by them in real life. <laughs> yeah, that is true. So you probably a lot, a lot of people have been joking. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> terrifying. <laughs> Absolutely terrifying. So yeah, lock him up for longer. Okay. okay. Finally, what do you make of uh, Halle Berry becoming the first black woman to win the oh, Best oh, Actress Oscar? Did you see her speech? Got on my nerves. Did it? I mean, you know, it's good that she won. You know, it's nice for anyone to win an award. Yeah. But she did go on a bit, and you know, I've I've been in that same sort of position. What? <laughs> Placing an Oscar? <laughs> well, I got um. It, what they used to do at school is uh. <laughs> okay. If you did a full month without being off, you got a gold certificate. <laughs> okay. And I did a month once without having a day off. And sure. I went up, and I didn't, I didn't do it, make a fuss. <laughs> you didn't start crying. <laughs> Can't play a record, mate. Well done, then. Yeah, Were you the first kid in your school to do that? I don't think anyone else got the certificate. It was only because I was never in. They tried to encourage me. To <laughs> <make> <laughs> it was just for you. you. They mounted an entire you ceremony just to encourage you. 
Uh, um, this week, Carl, my first question to you. Well, you're just your thoughts, please, on the criticism of the BBC over their coverage of the Queen Mum's death. What do you make of this? You're aware of all the criticism that Peter Sisson's no, asked and just the questions? It, uh, no, I thought he wore a burgundy tie. I thought that, that's it, yeah, he just had a, it didn't show respect, he just had a burgundy tie on. See, that, that's not really not showing respect, is it? No, it's not. You know, you show your respect by sort of doing the news on it, giving a, a, a bit of coverage. <laughs> And showing, you know, what a, publicity. A, what, what a good woman she was or whatever. Yeah. And then you move on to sport news or whatever. <laughs> <laughs> Do you know what I mean? Yeah. Um, I totally agree. I, I don't like the way everything's morbid. I was thinking about it. Um, it's like, um, you know, the way in birthday cards and that, people always put funny things in them. I think you should save things like that for funerals, for like, funeral cards and that. And, and try and cheer people up at times when they're low. Do you yeah. know what I mean? Because on your birthday you're quite happy anyway, so you don't need a, someone putting a funny comment in a card. I think, you know, when you send what, what, a card- What would you- what would you suggest? Well, you know, uh um, Whoopee cushion, but on the vicar's chair, what- what- how would you live it up to Just little- little things in the card, I mean, just writing stuff like, well, you know, at least you're still alive, or whatever. So as you're giving the eulogy- So, oh, that'd be good. So when- so suppose you know, someone's husband's killed in a car crash, you go around with some flowers and a little card and it says, at least you're still alive. Well, maybe something funnier than that. <laughs> <laughs> well, maybe, like, if you got up to give the eulogy during a, a funeral, just wear a pair of comedy tits. Yeah. Or those glasses that are eyes on sort of yeah. springs. But why have, why has everyone got to be so sad about someone dying? No, what annoys me is that when you see the people on television, they sort of, members of the public, and they're crying about the Queen Mother, who was sad when anyone dies, sad when anyone nan, nan dies. She was 102. And, um, what, you know, I mean, it's sort of like, I think they think they should cry. Well, I, there's a picture in the paper I today. I understand it. There's a picture in the paper today of uh, various people who were lining the pre, you know, the uh, the funeral uh, kind of route yeah. yesterday. And there's a picture of a, a very young child, maybe sort of five or six, on the arms of her dad, and her head bowed, and it says a, a, a young girl there weeps for the Queen Mother. And I was looking at it, and she, you can tell she's just tired. Well, she's she just tired and bored. It's so cry? transparent that it's not crying. It's Most just what are we doing when their nan dies? Exactly. You know, it's sort of like. Uh, but what is a five-year-old girl going to be? Why is she going to be crying? The Queen Mum said, oh, "I can't believe it." <laughs> yeah. Tell you, tubbies? No. The <laughs> Queen Mum. Oh, I'm not the tweenies. No, it's all in a minute. Yeah. <laughs> it's just like. Oh yeah. dear. I mean, I, I know. I'm sure you know. I don't know much about her. I don't know if she was a great woman. And obviously, you know, it's always sad when someone dies. But it's like it's interesting that there was a lot of tourists in that long line of people mm. that are now queuing from hours upon hours to see her yeah. dying in state, because it's clearly just people who want to be a part must of history. Must be gutting if you're over from Sweden and you find out that, you know, the Queen Mum's like, Oh, well, you must be devastated. You probably don't want to carry on with your visit. <laughs> exactly. Really. Okay, listen, Carl, um... I think we've covered that. What do you yeah. make of the, uh, <laughs> What do you make of the first genetically modified baby? Oh. Are you worried about these? Do you know what, what did they do? What? Let me see what it says here. It well, says, isn't it uh, just choosing, it, ju choosing the, you know... Eye colour. Well, this or, is the, or this is the this is the concern, isn't it? That in the future you'll be able to decide uh, whether it's a boy or a girl, what how intelligent it is, what it looks like, is it handsome, is it ugly? Obviously, no one will choose an ugly baby, and so on and so on and so on. And so, it means that you know wh where will it lead? Where will it end, Carl? Are you concerned? I've thought about this a lot. Cause what I've will us three look like in the future I mean, if listen. they're being you know genetically modified beautiful people? What will be we be like? How will we be considered in That's society? Fair, yeah. But we've talked about this before, haven't we? About uh, the cloning thing. Yeah. That's a bit weird. Yeah. But um. <laughs> I don't think it matters because at the end of the day, right, you might look like some other kid, but it's the way you've brought that you brought up that will change your features and the way you are, you know, your personality. If you lie, you get a long nose, don't you? Well, no, but listen, right, because I remember when w when we, you know, I was growing up on this estate. This is gonna be good. Go on. No, no, it's not. It's just a, an example of how this doesn't work. Go on. So, so we don't need to worry, sort of thing. Sure. Right? Okay. So growing up on this estate, and there was a there was this woman about four houses down, right? It's a bit rough. <laughs> All right. Didn't fancy her. Oh God, no. Right, but she had a Why? baby. Well, tell me about her first. I'm interested in this woman. Why was she? It was a very. Was it like being a man in a dress. I mean, I didn't grow up in a posh house or anything. And I'm sure. Not, I'm not saying that if you live in a bit of a rough house, mm. you're a bad person. What does she look like? But anyone can tattoos clean up. Look like they, Tony Green with a fag on. They didn't clean up much, right? Oh. Which even if you've not got a lot of money, you can still try what, and make it look nice. Yeah. Right. But she didn't, and a kid used to take a horse into the house. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> whoa, 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 oh, whoa, whoa, yeah. whoa, 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 Neddy, whoa, 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 What do you mean a kid used to take a horse into the house? When they get a right? horse? Must have nicked it from somewhere. <laughs> <laughs> Must have gone. you seen horse in it? <laughs> no. What, is that from outside the saloon round the corner? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, was it just tied up with a bit of... <laughs> <laughs> right? 
<laughs> I'm, um, oh, that's great. I Big, Big Jake, I'm <laughs> looking <laughs> so, for it. I, I don't know. <laughs> so, <laughs> so, so, let me get this. This was before the lynching stopped or... <laughs> 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 Where'd he get a um, horse from? What do you mean he must have nicked it? His mum said, where'd you get that from? I bought it. All right, then. But keep it out of the kitchen. <laughs> I don't want you going Catelyn, rustling. <laughs> Oh, where did he get a horse from, Carl? Just... And how long did he have it for? Insult. Was he leading it or riding it? <laughs> Mum, open the door, I can't stop! I can't stop it! <laughs> open the patio door as well, I'll be- Looks like we got us a runaway! <laughs> what <laughs> do you mean? I don't know, but the oh. thing is they couldn't afford to buy one because they're not cheap. So I'm just guessing. Maybe that's wrong of me. But I, I think- He had a it. horse? Yeah, right, so- That's why the family didn't have any money, they'd spend it on the horse! No, exactly. I don't think, that's what I'm saying, I don't think they would have bought it. So anyway- Yeah, it's so... to whisper, Carl, in case they're listening. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and They it's could not, be in the room next door. It's not buying it, it's keeping it as well. Oh, well, so, I, so I was like in the car with my dad, coming yeah. into the avenue, and you used to have to drive down it to turn round. And, yeah. Uh, and you know, sort of go back to, to our house. You had the traditional method of transport, <laughs> yeah. And, uh, the horse was in the lounge. <laughs> Reading a paper. Just, just like walking around. <laughs> oh God! This, what? And when I, when I was doing, I, I tried to earn myself some money once by flogging little flowers in, in plastic cups. What? This right. is and genius. Went, <laughs> it just keeps coming. What do you mean you're trying to flog little flowers? What do you mean? <laughs> Wait, 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 wait. Let's play a record. Let's play a record and come back to this. Because it's always going to just unravel and unravel. It's going to go for hours. Let's play a track, Carl. It's deeper and deeper. It's like an onion, isn't it? We've created a whole world here where there's a man living with a horse. Just walking around the lounge. I mean, I come from the West Country. I've never heard anything like that. I just think of a big sort of like orange carpet and it's got a rediffusion telly and this horse going, I'm fed up in here. Exactly. This is really. I am not taking the rubbish out again. Yeah. Right, play a record. Let's have uh, Velvet Underground. We've got that line down oh, yeah, the The classic from the first album, uh, I'm Waiting for the Man. Let's come back to the horse in a second. Little flowers in pots. <laughs> what do you mean? Oh. Classic first album, Velvet Underground and Nico, which apparently peaked at a disappointing 171 in the US charts. Think of that. And that's obviously Louis de Velvet Underground and uh, Waiting for the Man. Yeah, great track. So, we were talking, uh, we were doing White Van Man, and uh, we got onto uh, um, we got onto genetically, uh, genetically modified babies. But and then somehow Carl we... started telling a story about someone with a horse, and then he got onto he was trying to make money selling flowers. Just do the flowers briefly. Well, hang on, I just want to recap slightly. So there was a family, and who had the horse in the family? It was because you lived on a, an estate in Manchester. The, so the, the yeah. mother, the mother was a right pig, apparently. Well, I don't know if that's well, relevant. You don't need to go that far. But, but, you, but well, well, what I'm on. trying to do is like make a picture for you so you understand. What, so what a picture like? it is. Who did she look like? Um, bit of a, and no disrespect to her, bit like Pauline Quirk. <laughs> Quirky, yeah. <laughs> right? Okay. I knew you were going to say that. Yeah. I knew it was going to be Pauline. Did she have any tats? Did she have any tats? I never got that close to her. Okay, all right. So, and so who had the horse? Was this her son or her no, husband? No, her, her daughter. Her daughter had stolen a horse? Yeah, from, I don't know where, there was a, I think it was some stables down the road or something. And they, they kept the horse in the house with them. They kept it in the house. Did but they, they get didn't caught? have it for long. No. So, and you said you were in the house one day and you saw the no, horse No, what there. happened was, I was, um, they did this thing at school about raising money for charity, right? For some local charity. And they said you can do anything to, to raise money and they came out with all these ideas and I thought, that's good. What was the charity? But forget, well, I don't know, I thought, forget the charity. Yeah, that's I'm just a, a good money-making yeah. overweight. So, <laughs> You're a charity. So, um, <laughs> so I asked me mum for some, uh, cause she used to have a lot of flowers around the house. Sure. I said, can I just take some snippings off them? And, uh, I'll go and buy some plastic cups. And, uh, got some soil out of the garden. Planted the, the, the bits of plants in them. Yeah. Got a tray. Yeah. Had about 25 plants on it. Selling yeah. them for 25 pence each. Excellent. To sell any? Yeah, so loads. So they, did you just cut, you didn't just cut them and stick them in yeah, the soil? Yeah, they wouldn't have survived. Oh. But I think people sort of thought, well, good on him for trying. But anyway, so I went round to theirs, because I thought their house could do with a bit of colour and stuff. Yeah. So it's a bit rough. So as I went- The horse went, thank God for that <laughs> breakfast. <laughs> they've <laughs> been, they been feeding me kitty cat. Yeah. So I got up to the door, and they opened the door, and it was one of them houses where no carpet, <laughs> yeah. A horse in the living room. <laughs> you know. We've all been there. And, yeah. and the horse was walking around the living room. Oh. I looked quite happy and everything because I always say that about animals. Black Beauty right? was on. <laughs> no, <laughs> yeah. Well, think about it, right? If you were a horse, where would you rather be? In a little wooden hut with a load of hay or in like a house with a central know, heating? Three piece suite and sure. a telly and that. <laughs> <laughs> telly and that! But no, but I was saying this the other day. <laughs> and an Atari. Right? <laughs> 
<laughs> I was walking through London. Commodore the other day. 64, yeah. rubbish. Exactly. W walking through London with Suzanne, right? Yeah. And do you know, like homeless people always have dogs. And yeah. she said, oh, I hope, I hope she looks after it. I said, they've got- that dog is happier than most dogs. Right. Because people always walk past and give it a pat on the head. Yeah. It's with its owner all the time. Yeah. yeah. It's out in the open, it's not locked up in a house. Yeah. It doesn't you know eat, I mean? but other than that- <laughs> No, it does eat though, they're always alright. So that's what I was saying, I think this horse- was- was doing alright for yeah. itself. Do you know? Well, not many horses have got their own house. Is that the start, yeah. But anyway, that's- that's- what, That's what by the by. Yeah, yeah, so anyway, this family- it was a bit- what were we talking about? It was about cloning- Genetically modified kids yeah. and all that yeah. stuff, yeah. Right, now what I'm saying is, you could say, you know, right Steve, you could have a baby, right? Mm -hmm. And Ricky could see it and say, God, I want one that looks like that. Yeah. <laughs> right? It could happen, Rick. <laughs> so- Come on, work with him. So you take it to your doctors, and I don't know what they do, they, they inject it with something or whatever. Yep, that's how yeah. it's done. Yeah. And uh, get a little baby, and there it is, it looks the same. Now the thing is, you separate, you both go off and do your own things. Yep. Right? Yeah. Now, you look at Ste Stephen, this is, you look after your baby. Yeah. You treat it well, you give it good food and I'm that. a good day. All the vitamins and stuff. Yeah. Ricky just gives it cheese. <laughs> right? So then it changes its looks, it goes a bit fat. You know, it gets tired easily, and that sort of thing. <laughs> now, when this family- Why am I just feeding a baby cheese? Right? This, this, um, this, this, this family had a horse in the, in, you know, in, the, in their house. Yeah. They had a, a little baby. And my mum went round and said, you're not gonna believe this, but it's a beautiful looking baby. Right? Yeah. And I was like, well, you know. And, uh, the weird thing is, it was a good looking kid, but as time went on, they didn't really look after it. And I'm not saying like abusing it, but it used to run around, it used to play out till like ten at night. Yeah. Uh, it used to chase cars. <laughs> right. It was a bit- <laughs> Did it have hooves? <laughs> yeah, no. no. <laughs> it used to chase cars! Right. What the fuck? It chases <laughs> cars! <laughs> oh god, now, was it called Rover? The weird Did it cut th sticks? It's Liam it was called, right? Right. Now, the weird thing is, it was a good looking kid, but as time went on, and all that like not eating properly and its hair was all patchy. It's not Liam Gallagher, is it? <laughs> <laughs> and chasing cars on that and it became an ugly kid. It's definitely Liam Gallagher. <laughs> and that's, uh, that's what I'm saying, right? You can uh, clone, you can clone all you like, but at the end of the day, it's yeah. what you brought up. Brilliant. Wow. <laughs> oh, life. Wow. That was a hell of a point. Oh God. Ooh. But am I right? Oh, uh, you're always right, Carl. Finally. White van man, what do you make of the fact that Sainsbury's are bringing in square tins? <laughs> 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 is, is that, that true? a concern for you? Is that true? Apparently so. Why? Don't know. Like it's easier to stack. Oh, this is what the guy in the uh, sun has said. That should be interesting. For <laughs> 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 that should be. <laughs> His comment on Sainsbury's are bringing in square tins <laughs> is no. Is that should be interesting for meatballs. <laughs> Ricky's just oh. collapsed on the floor. Let's just play a song, Carl. I don't think even you can top that. Never. Um, what do you make of, well, obviously the big news, David Beckham's broken foot. Is this uh, a big concern for you? No, I mean, it's sad, you know, um, it's, sad, it's sadder for him more than anyone, cause you know, to, to like, be in the World Cup is like the main thing for him, isn't it? Yeah. But he's still a young lad, and uh, I don't think he'll give up, I reckon he'll still turn up. Uh, he'll be all right, and uh, yeah, good luck to the lad. You know, I like David. I'm not going to slag him off. His <laughs> <laughs> <What are you laughs> words. <laughs> he says that like he knows him, <laughs> like he's popping round for drinks later. <laughs> yeah, like we tried to stitch you up. Go but, on. But um, obviously yesterday, was it yesterday? I think maybe maybe Thursday. Uh, the Sun printed a big picture of uh, David's uh, foot mm. and encouraged everyone to touch it at midday, because hoping that this would somehow, um, if we all thought and prayed together, somehow that would help his foot heal. Do you do you believe in that? No. Have you any belief in that? No, you're going down the old. Like you're a gallery, aren't you? Sure. I know it's stupid. Yeah. I'm sure. I mean, it's nice effort and everything. It sort of cheers everyone up. Hold on. <clears throat> you believe in ghosts and warlocks yeah. and uh, licking toads? How, uh, wh why? Why is that any more stupid than all those things? It just—it's not going to work, is it? <laughs> <laughs> no, all right. Fine. It's rubbish. <laughs> okay. Okay. Uh, what about this then? There's uh, apparently now available 1.5 million pound apartments available on an exclusive ship which sails around the world. 
Yeah, it's like uh, what do you make of that? It's a huge thing, and you just you, you live on it, and it's. I mean, in theory, how big, how big is it? It's um, it's mental. Do you it's know like a like town in the centre. Do you know how like people said that the Titanic was the biggest ship? Was that only then? They've got yes. bigger ones now, haven't they? Yeah, a lot bigger. Oil tankers are much bigger, and yeah. No, but actual nine is a big. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It was it was the biggest then, yeah. Because my mum told me that there was one that that was that was that big that it had like rough areas on it. <laughs> <laughs> oh. 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 God. <laughs> oh. Don't go starboard. Oh God. No, but do you know That's what I mean. Right. It was like we're, a... we're thinking of moving. We're seeing yeah. the captain. We're thinking of moving to a nicer <laughs> area. Oh yeah. <laughs> I've heard they're very rough in aft. <laughs> oh, God. Oh, that's They fantastic. steal your tyres. That ship's so big, there was <laughs> rough areas. Oh. How, how big is this one that, that you're talking about? <laughs> uh, well, I don't know, it doesn't give me the spe specifications here, but they it's stay huge. huge. They're huge. Uh, in theory, I mean, it's, it's that thing with, um, uh, it's obviously marketing, but, um, they're gonna, um, uh, solve, uh, the, uh, um, overpopulation crisis where soon we'll all be just be floating around the sea, yeah, but. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I can see that, because I mean, think about it, right? I've been talking to Ricky about it. I was hoping to buy somewhere in London, but there is no way in this world that I can afford it, right? Um, and you look at all the, all the wasted space, like, with the Thames, all it's doing is, like, collecting crisp packets and stuff and yeah. Coke cans, and people have to clean it up, whereas if you think, if you got a load of boats on there... Yeah. Problem Perfect. solved. Yeah. Would you live on a boat? solved. Uh, what's his name did it, didn't he? Uh, what's that program? Is it Bergeron? Noah. Oh, Bergerac? There was one where, where he lived on a boat, I think it's quite- was That it was a shoestring. I, I'd give it a go anyway. <laughs> no, uh, I'd like to see you, um, living in, in the air, maybe in a giant hot air balloon. Yeah, alright. But, um, no, the boat thing, um, cause it, it, it is gonna get bad as well, isn't it? They're saying that the water's melting or whatever. The water's melting, the, yeah. The ice is melting. Yeah. And, and there's gonna be more no water and less land, so yeah. in the future it's probably gonna be the way we're gonna be living, isn't it? Have you seen that film Waterworld? Nah, I don't fancy it. Because yeah, that, 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 that sort of predicts that, yeah. What, are they saying that the ice thing exactly. is Exactly, yeah. But at the same time, um, I was thinking about this a couple of weeks ago. <laughs> if you get, I mean, I think I read that, like, a big chunk of ice, uh, fell off one of the ice, uh, what do you call them? Caps. Ice caps. Something like, the, I think they said it's the size of the Empire State Building or something. Right. It, it snapped off and went into the water and it's melted. And they say, oh, it's bad news, you know, that something that size is melting. But the way I look at it, if something that size falls into the water, it's like a big ice cube, and it's gonna freeze it up again. You, are you with me? Not no. really, Carl. Go on. Right, you get a giant ice cube, yeah. the size of the Empire State Building, yeah. stick it in the water, yeah. it's gonna make, uh, that, it's gonna stick back on again, isn't it? Well, no, uh, only on if again. it freezes up again. Yeah, well, it will freeze up. The water's well, it won't, gonna get cold again because you've just put a giant ice cube in the water. Well, so when you put <laughs> when you put an ice cube in a drink, the drink doesn't freeze, does it? No, the ice melts. Like, if you put one the size of an Empire State Building in your glass of Jack Daniels, <laughs> it's gonna make it freezing. <laughs> It's not going in a glass of Jack Daniels, it's going in the ocean. I know, but I'm, that, you see, I'm using my fables. Imagine <laughs> a world. <laughs> Use your brain instead! <laughs> imagine the world, imagine the sea, yeah. like the Arctic or whatever, as yeah. a glass of Jack Daniels. Okay. A big ice cube falls into it. Yeah. It freezes, it melts back on again. So it's, we're all right, I don't know why everyone's worrying. <laughs> oh, <guys, God. laughs> thank God for that, I was getting panicked. Oh, fine. Do you understand what I'm saying? Yeah, no, you're right. Yeah, that will happen. <laughs> Should we play some more music and then come back to work? Yeah, this is, this, this is, is better than ever. This is this dynamite this week. <laughs> Hi, Nina. On XFM 104.9, we're doing White Van Carl. Got another one there? Uh, well, it's just uh, another, your thoughts really on uh, the Queen Mum's uh, very British send off that she was given this week. Yeah. What do you make of all those people queuing up to see her? Did you think that was incredible? Right. Well, what we said last week, you know, there was a. I, I don't quite understand why there's so many people there um, who were like getting really upset. Do you know what I mean? Really upset, crying and stuff. And you know, you can lose someone who's r like related to you, and you don't you don't cry like that. You sort of sit there and you think back to what you did with them and stuff, and and then that's it. But um, <laughs> the queue thing, it was wasn't it like miles long and stuff? Yeah, it was. Yeah. Right. I was sat watching this. We see twelve right hours now. queuing. Yeah. He never got to and 12 hours. It did, but it that did. was the estimated time. No, but how you know. long is a queue when they're just like, you know, walking along? Think how far you can sort of like, st you know, stagger in 12 hours. Incredible. It's been ridiculous. Yeah. But 
again, you know, if they want to do that, it's their time and that, isn't it? And yeah. It was at the weekend, so they, they could have. It's not as if they got out of work to do it. No. You know, I mean, they use their own time, so good on them. But I thought, right, what they could have done. Remember when I studied Che Guevara? Yep. Yeah. Right. Um, and don't be offended by this. It's just an idea because they did it with Che Guevara. Remember when they cut him up? Yes, Remember? they they cut him up. Yeah. What was the reason for cutting him up? Uh, well, they cut up Che in order to try and, um, make, you, you, you told us that they were gonna send bits of his body to Fidel Castro and various other people, wasn't that right? Uh, uh, as, as a warning, wasn't it, though, to all the, the people, like, one to... Yeah, uh, my, my understanding was that they cut him up in order to, um, so they could bury him in different places so that there'd be one no shrine, there'd be, you know, what, not one place that you could go to in order right. to, well, to sort of make him like a martyr. A little bit like that. I've, like, I six cues. I can see where this is going. Six cues, and it's like, number one, you can, you know, go and pay respect to her head, or whatever. Oh, God. No, but think. I just was thinking the way of, of speeding it up. I'm not having a go, I'm not, because they haven't done it, so it doesn't matter. God. But they did it with Che Guevara. Yeah. Everybody would have felt like they've got close to her. <sighs> And it would have speeded it up. No, I mean, but I can understand. Can I just say that genuinely, Carl is not being disrespectful here. This is his best idea to to cut down the queues. So don't phone in. He's not suggesting we should have done this. He genuinely well, he is. is. It's, well, but I mean, he's not doing it to be nasty or wacky or or you know, he thinks this is a good idea. So can just I just throw a thought? Che Guevara was like a powerful man. He did a lot for the world and what yeah. have you. Yeah. Yeah. And have you, are you aware that I, I feel slightly responsible for this because have you heard of the quote, um, a little knowledge is a dangerous thing? Yeah. Okay. Steve, next mm, one. No, just a very quick question. I can understand those that have queued for 12 hours to see the head. <laughs> I'd be a little bit annoyed if I got there to find a toe. I'll tell you what though, I'll tell you what they could do without chopping her up. They could put about nine cues, each could see each hip she had. <laughs> That's true enough. Because she's, she's had about nine of them, yeah. so it'd just be, uh, the, if you want to see the whole body, it's 12 hour queue. If you just want to see a couple of the hips. Here's another suggestion for you, I just <laughs> thought, right? But <laughs> Instead of everyone queuing to see her, why not put her on a trolley <laughs> <laughs> and wheel her past everyone else? Running. So uh, yeah, yeah, you could have, you could have some students on rag week that can combine <laughs> it. Like when they're always pushing a bed. <laughs> you know, they could just run it along <laughs> the, uh, the queue. No, that'd, that'd be, be that, fantastic. That'd be disrespectful. <laughs> right, as opposed to the chopping up. So. Sure. Right. right. Well, just, just an idea. Just I apologise now. Anyone yeah, yeah. offended? Yeah, anyone offended, I'm sorry. But yeah. Okay, finally, um, this is more frothy. Liz Hurley lying low, apparently, at Elton John's house to try and avoid the press now that she's had a child. That's a good mm -hmm. place to go to avoid the press. <laughs> exactly. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> Elton John's house. Yeah. Everyone seems to be friends with Elton John. Yeah, why they, 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 they pop into Elton John's house? What is he running some sort well, of. It was like when Robbie Williams was a drunkard and a drug addict, he went to Elton John's. Yeah, yeah and there's the other fellow that went there as well, was someone to, you know, to recuperate and uh, quite shoulder the choir. Is he, is he giving out false yeah. f passports? But I don't like, know if people have seen his history. He's not the man of, you know, I mean, I know he's cleaned himself up now, but you know, maybe yeah. that's it. Maybe he's got this kind of insight into uh, how to deal with celebrity. Yeah. What well, do you I, think? I think he's just genuine oh. mates with him. I think he's I just like so. a friendly I bloke. Think she's been doing too much lying low in the first place. That's part <laughs> of the problem, isn't it? <laughs> <laughs> High that five, Carl. That was a genuine joke from Carl there. And he's so proud of himself. Look at his little face. Too much lying low. <laughs> Oh, that was no, Mike Van Cole. You. Why, why can't she just go around to her mum and dad's or something rather than Elton John where everyone's looking? Yeah. 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 <laughs> That's the point, isn't it? Yeah. So that was good, yeah. Very good. Okay, we just do White Van Carl then. This is, this is your opinions. You can't be wrong on this, can you? There's no right or wrong answer here. <laughs> okay. All right. But so this is where we ask Carl his views on the, uh, the big news stories of the week. Basically, we've, we've stolen an idea from the Sun newspaper. And, um. So this isn't cruel, this program, is it? Oh. I don't think so. Picking it's on not, me. It's not, is it? Uh, it's weird because a few people have said, oh, you're picking on me. It's, it depends how you look at things, isn't sure. it? Sure. Yeah. But you do, do you like it? We, I mean, we could look at it like it's a laugh. <laughs> so yeah. it's not but a problem for us. You know, we like you. You know, you're, you're our favourite. Yeah. I, I'm going to say thing in the world, but I don't mean that, you know, in a derogatory way. No, no it's, I'm cool with it. Yeah? Yeah. Right. Okay. So, uh, your views, please, on the fact that, uh, attitudes are changing to the possible marriage of Charles and Camilla. Oh, what do you think of that? Um, the, the roars at the moment because the recent tragedies are uh, apparently uh, high in the polls and people are coming around to the idea of Charles and Camilla getting hitched. What's your thought? Um, whatever really. I mean, if they're happy with it. The thing that comes out of it most is it just goes to show, right, that there is someone for everyone. Just because, I mean, no disrespect to Camilla, I'm not a good looking person either. But she isn't a stunner, and yet she's gone and picked up a royal. 
right? Yeah. So I think it's good for things like that to happen because it cheers you up. Do you know what I mean? Uh, gives you a bit of hope. Thanks, Carl. Um, so yeah, it's 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 good. It's, you know, if, if they're happy, if any, anyone's happy, it's a good story, isn't it? Yeah. <laughs> you know <what> I mean, <laughs> yeah. You no, know, he's had a bit of bad luck. And, uh, and now he's, he's got someone else in his life, so. I'm just, while he's doing this, I'm just doing a list of questions to ask him what he thinks of things in the world. Okay. Is that alright? Yeah, no, no problem. Yeah, just, yeah, okay. No problem. Um, okay, what do you, uh, make of, well, now listen, this may be a non-story, or it may be the biggest story that's about to break. Ulrika Johnson and Sven Goran Eriksson's affair. Are you familiar with this? It's over the papers today. Apparently, uh, Ulrika and Sven are going out, although there appears to be no evidence for this. Yeah, I don't even give it time of day. Do you not quite I mean? right? Well done. Doesn't doesn't affect me whatsoever as long as he does his job well. Yep. And what's she doing at the moment? Presenting dog eat dog, I think. Right. You know. As long as she does. <laughs> <her> <laughs> <job> well. As long <laughs> as they both do their jobs well. Well, yeah. At the end of the day, yeah. I, that's going on with a lot of people out in the world, isn't it? Do you know what I mean? Just because he's an England boss, as long as you know we win the win the games and that, he's yeah. doing his job. Mm, mm. If she's you know gets a dog winning a prize or whatever. <laughs> no. He was, okay. It's not what yeah. going on. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. So... <laughs> it's a dog winning a prize. I haven't seen Dog Eat Dog. What's okay. it about? It's all right. It's all right. No, so, go on. so that's it. Yeah, it doesn't matter. Okay. okay. What about this then? Uh, are you uh, disappointed by the notion that uh, a third of us are apparently unaware of St. George's Day? 23rd. Is St. George's Day the one with the snakes that we've talked about? No, that's... Are, that's you, are you one of that third, do you think? <laughs> <laughs> St. George is the patron saint of England who uh, killed the dragon. Yeah, I mean, there's too many of these days, isn't there? That's the problem. If mm. you make it a bit more special, mm. like Christmas, so you buy t presents and that for each other, then people will remember it. But there's so many of these days with mm. Easter and Pancake Tuesday and all that. <laughs> <laughs> so <laughs> it's not surprising. I think as time goes on, we'll find that a lot of these days will just disappear because you know people are busy. There'll be new ones, won't there? Uh, I don't know. People. There'll are be like busy. Gareth Gates Day in 50 years time. It's just weird. Yeah. I mean, I remember being a kid, right? Going out on a Sunday and shops will be shut mm. because it was like, you know, the day of rest and all that. People don't care now. It's like, oh, we can make some more money, we'll open the shops. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? It's Is that a good or a bad thing, Carl? Uh, it's good because I remember I used to have to get up early to go and get some bread if we didn't have any in. Because <laughs> the shop would only be open for a couple of hours in the morning. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Whereas now I'd be able to. Yeah, I remember that. In. I remember that. Shop shut. And you couldn't get aspirin and stuff, exactly. certain things. Yeah, nightmare yeah. on a Sunday afternoon. Yeah. 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 So, That's right, yeah. And pubs didn't open for 12. Do you remember space operas? Yeah. Yeah, shut up. Um, um, can I ask you something? Go on. Okay, I've got a little list of things. Um, what do you think of, like, those pug dogs that are bred and they can hardly breathe? Evil. Yeah. What do you think of, um, uh, gays? Uh, they're all right. Do you know what I mean? Just like straight people, you get bad ones, you get good ones. Exactly. Hey? We've learned a lesson today, haven't Absolutely. we? Absolutely. Let's play a record. Yeah? What do you fancy, a bit of radio ad? Yeah. <laughs> You don't mind, though, if people think we're gay, for instance, when we go to the Baptist tomorrow? No, that's no. terrible. I don't want that happening. Why? Hey? Why? Because I'm not. That'd be a lie. <laughs> <laughs> I don't like lying. If I was, I'd say I was gay. Yeah. But I'm not. We'll say you were. Just pretend. We won't get in otherwise. No. Just a little kiss and a cuddle. Say I'm, I'm a bit gay. No. Cool. I'm not gay. Okay, what do you make of this? The average woman, apparently, takes 27 minutes to get ready to go out. Did you know that? It's a <laughs> Are they saying that's that's a good thing or... No, they're saying that the bare minimum... It no, takes no, average, what surely. No, no, no. But I remember reading, I'm sure they said that, um, it takes them 27 minutes to get ready to go out, at the very least, I well, think. It's, it's not that bad if it's for a night out. It's... That, I mean, 30 minutes is all right. If it's but, going to get to 20 woodbines. But, <laughs> yeah, or, you know, if the house is on fire and it's like quick, <laughs> yeah, get ready I, and get out. I, I, don't, I don't think it's in a, in a, a fire, no. I, I think, yeah, go on. I think twi that's, that's 27 minutes. I'd take about like 27 I, minutes. I can take up to that. But they, they, do they include the getting up and having a bath? Doesn't that? give me any more details. No. Well, I, it's difficult to go by. It's difficult to go on that one, isn't it? How long does Suzanne take to go out of the house? Depends, like I say, if, we, if we're just nipping out shopping. Uh, the old flip flops and trackies on. Yeah, but if you're going out for the night, it takes a bit longer, doesn't it? Yeah. Yeah, you got wire in the flip the uh, trackies. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um. Okay. Um. Okay. No, really, don't know what the ins and outs of this story are. Is Van Goren Eriksson sticking with Nancy rather than Ulrika? Was well, his wife and it was girlfriend? Yeah, I don't know if the story's true. No one seems to have offered any evidence for it. Anyway, everyone remains silent. Rubbish.
And, uh, okay, what do you make of this? David Beckham, apparently, was driving despite having an injured foot and, uh, just further threatening his World Cup chances. Now, obviously, you're a big football fan. Well, I'm, I'm not that big. I like, I like the odd game. Sure. Uh, would that hurt him? Would that hurt his foot? It can be good. Is it in a plaster? It's not well, it's, a big it's cast, just, is it? It's better to drive than it is to walk on it. <laughs> good point. Fair enough, yeah. Go on. Can't argue can't with can't that. Can't get the bus, can he? Okay, and what do you make of this, uh, fascist leader who's having a lot of success in the French presidential elections? What's he doing? Have you not, have you not come across this story? No. Right, this is one of the big, big political so, so stories. He's got a far right that got nearly 20 percent. He's a far right fascist leader and he's, uh, having, uh, considerable success in the French elections. I don't think we should be asking hard questions like this. There's not something you've got to I, I, I'm getting scared. There's all sorts of bad stuff going on in the world that we don't know about. Um, yeah. But we know about this. <laughs> But you're better off not knowing because there's nothing I can do about it. <laughs> <laughs> you're absolutely right, Carl. Ah! <laughs> <laughs> I can't argue with that. Oh, God, oh that's man, fantastic. That's that is brilliant. It's big stories. Mm. Carl, let me ask you now, um, what do you make of Prince Harry smoking openly at a polo club? Um, Are you aware of this story? No. Is it? Go on. Prince Harry, you know that he's one of the royals. Yeah. And he was seen smoking openly, openly, a fag, a cigarette. Uh, a polo third, milk, third right? in line to the throne. Something like that, yeah. Imagine that. Someone right? smoking a cigarette is third in line to the throne. A cigarette, Carl. <laughs> is it a non smoking polo club? Do you know, I don't know, but, uh, but if it were, would that make things even worse for you? Well, no, yeah. seriously, what, what do you make of it? This is, this is, you know, the whole, you know, the, the furore is he's a role model, you know, he's a royal, should he be seen puffing away? In a public place. I don't think it matters, does it? Not concern for you? How old is he? Is he old enough to smoke? I think he probably is, yeah. Right, yeah well, I, I think the trouble with, um, this role model thing with anything that's legal, it should either be illegal or not. Yes. I just don't think you can impose things like that, yeah. uh, because you could say that it is bad for you and it is bad to start smoking and it really is bad for you, and it, you know, it causes cancer and everything. But everyone knows so that, don't they? Uh, well, yeah, but you should either make it illegal or shut up about it. So this is Carl you're asking, isn't I it? I am indeed. So, right, yes. so we can throw these questions your way as well <laughs> yes, if you fancy. Sorry, it. yeah. But, but it doesn't so, matter. But Carl, what are your views generally? I mean, it's obviously cigarettes are uh, perfectly legal and so on, but what about stronger narcotics? Because I know you're very scared of drugs and stuff, aren't you? You're no, really... I don't, I'm not a fan. I don't no, know. What's your concern? What's your worry? Just yeah. that you might get into them. It's sure. like you might have them and go, oh, this is all right. Yeah. Exactly, Carl. Yeah. Yeah. Exactly. Uh, Although I was talking to you about it earlier and you weren't that, <laughs> you weren't very sympathetic about a lot of young people who, who have perhaps gone to crack or smack. You, you, didn't you describe it as their own fault? Sometimes it is, isn't it? Yeah. I mean, I could have turned to it where I grew up, but I said, well, don't want to do that, it's not good for you. Sure. And I avoided it. You turned to ghosts. So you've so got no sympathy for anyone who's, who's a drug addict? It's their own fault, is your- It depends, your... doesn't it? Sure. Do you know what I mean? You can be an addict if, I don't know, something, I'm trying to think of a nice way that well, you might- Well, most people start on stuff like that because something really traumatic has happened to them. Very few people go out for a laugh yeah. one night and, and, and go, let's all try it. Sure. So, uh, you know, but- yeah. Just say no, I suppose it's the, uh, the, the attitude no. the Listen to the, uh, cast of Grange Hill. Now, this will scare you. Now, this, Carl, you will be a little bit unnerved about this. Have you seen the film Jurassic Park? Yeah. You know what happened there? Well, according yeah. to the sign here, it says scientists are planning to clone mammoths for a theme park. Look at his face, look at that, he looks like a dog caught in the, the headlights of a car, he's terrified. I love Carl. He strokes the tension there. I love Carl. Is that, is that the best news you could have? Man moths. <laughs> <laughs> Right, yeah, man um, moths. I man love moths. the fact that that's why he was so excited that they bred a man moth. What is what is this? Yeah, it's it's a human being that that hides in your wardrobe and eats the entire jacket in a day. Yeah. yeah. What do you mean, man moths? Mammoths. Mammoth. The big hairy cow the from the ice age. I mean, right. elephant. You're not so excited yeah. about that, then. <laughs> you can take or leave bringing back mammoths to life, but a man moth, a man moth is a different matter. <laughs> oh, <laughs> if we'd if we'd have uh, never brought that up, he'd have gone and told someone now. Yeah, you know, I've bred an half man, half moth. This and is that's what how, we this mean. How things start. This you is what we mean when you, you hear these ghost stories. Are you slightly stories? deaf? Is that it? When you hear these stories, you're slightly deaf. And his head and his head was in the basket, and he went count how many times I blink. Is it? I. Is, Carl, uh, is English your first language? <laughs> Are you actually foreign? Is that yeah. the thing? Yeah. Do, should we well, speak when we slower? say foreign, we, we mean not of this planet. Yeah. Should we speak slower? Would that be a help to you? No, 
Go on. Next what do you make of that? This is good. We are good to bring back mammoths. These giant elephants. They're, they're slow, aren't they? It's not as if they're gonna, like, get out and run fast and they can't capture them. They'll probably be like a fence, to be honest, Carl. They'll probably be a fence. No, but, I'm saying, but, they're, but you're asking it as if, like, oh, it could all go wrong, but it couldn't, yeah. could it? Well, really? but, 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 but the point was about uh, Jurassic Park is they thought it wouldn't go wrong. They thought they had it all under yeah, control. Well, have you learned nothing uh, from Jurassic Park, Carl? Dinosaurs would say, oh, think about it before you do it. But <laughs> with a, with a airy elephant, it's, it's not gonna... Not a concern for you. Would oh. you go along to see him? Would you be interested in that? If it was in the area. <laughs> <laughs> He's the best. He's great, isn't he? I'd love, I'd love a cue, Nothing right? impresses No, him. but what I'd like to do is Carl sitting like Yoda in a little cave, and I'd just like to see people like Tony Blair and, you know, Stephen Hawking's in a queue, and they go and say, Carl, got a bit of a problem. Um, yeah, and thinking of cloning a man and a moth. <laughs> yeah. Problem? <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, I'm not an issue. You know, if I'm in the air and I want to have a look at it, otherwise just don't send it near my, uh, my um, clothes. Oh, that's fantastic. So, so it's just for a second. What, what, as, the, as the words man moth, came into your head. Well, how excited were you? I mean, were you both terrified and excited? For- just for the moment when you thought that they'd cloned a man and a moth? I pictured, um... What kind of face oh, did he have? Was, oh, did he have the moth's head or was it a man's head? Just a little head. Little man head. Right, what- what was his face? What did it look like? Just- he just was like a bit like- A bit, bit shocked. Perplexed, yeah. <laughs> Um, yeah, it, like, so it was like he'd been, he'd been, he'd been grafted onto the body of a moth yeah. without his, his consent. And when he was asleep, he yeah, he'd woken up. He just, he just went in for a rather goiter removed yeah. and they said, we've he replaced your goiter wings. with the body of a giant moth. Yeah. Just Is that all right, Mr. Jenkins? Mm, so sorry. he had the head of a, a little, was it a little boy or a man? Little man. Right, okay. And he's just bumping into a lamp. <laughs> <laughs> just bumping into a lamp. <laughs> if you, Carl, if you, if you, uh, went into hospital, and, and they'd done something. What, what's the worst thing they do, right? What would you rather have done, do you, right? You wake up and you've got, um, lobster claws for hands. Right. You wake up and you've got duck's feet. Uh, or you wake up and you've got one horn coming out of your head. The worst thing. Yeah. Probably the, uh, <laughs> the horn coming out of my head. Why? Get in the way. <laughs> That'd be useful, wouldn't it, in fights and stuff. And, uh, for, like, parties, people would play well, points. Well, I suppose the lobster claws would also be quite handy, though. <laughs> <laughs> Definitely. <laughs> anyway, here's the first one. And they're not fascinating, Carl, but I'm just interested on in your take, really. Yeah. What do you make of Scylla Black quitting Blind Date after her husband sent a message from beyond the grave? Are you familiar know, with this story? What's, yeah. what's that? She went to see a medium and uh, supposedly her husband passed on information through the medium, which was incredibly vague, but um, persuaded her to quit live on air. Well, it's about, it's about time, isn't it? If even dead people are saying, <laughs> I'm not enough. <laughs> ah! Oh, well, I'll tell you what though, talking, about, talking about ghosts and that, do you know how I'm into them? Yeah. yeah. Right? How weird do you think this is, right? Well, it's not true. Before you say it, <laughs> play a record. <laughs> no, go on, go on. Uh, <laughs> go on. Right, it's this woman. <clears throat> oh. I don't even know if it's ghost really, it's just a bit weird. Sure. Yeah. Right? Sure. There's this woman, yeah. and she's. Well, she's not a woman, she's a kid. Sure. <laughs> okay. She's, sure. She's walking down like a, a street in her area, it's a nice day and everything, everything's normal. Um. She's walking down, and a woman comes up, cycling past, right? The woman on the bike looks at the kid absolutely terrified, right? right. Got a really scary face on her. Yeah. The kid's thinking, why, why is she doing that? Yeah. Right? So anyway, she thinks nothing, nothing of it, goes, you know, I think she's playing in the park or whatever, goes and has a nice day. About 15 years later... Oh, right, yeah. She's, I don't know, I think she was going to work, right, on a bike. She's riding her own bike. Riding okay. her own bike. Cycling down the road. Oh yeah. Looks at the kid. That's the thing that happened like 15, 20 years ago. Right. It's her on the bike looking at her as a kid. Right. What not 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 another child. No. Nope. So right. it's her. She's seen herself. Well, uh, what, Carl. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I don't know where to start. Firstly, where does this information come from? But I mean, what? Why do you ever? Con I mean, I don't know what part of that you think can be true. I, I don't, I, I, I'm honest, I'm, oh, I'm speechless. I don't know what to say. What are you talking about? <laughs> <laughs> bit, bit weird though, isn't it? But it's not true. It didn't happen, nothing happened like that. She said it did. Well, no, she's wrong. Who? She said she saw herself. 
she saw herself as a kid, didn't she? Did she come and, uh, and as an adult when she was a kid? <laughs> did, did she stop and talk to herself, or did she ride on by and think that's a bit weird? There's me as an eight-year-old. <laughs> I won't stop. I'll be late for work. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. If I'm late again, the boss said he'd be in trouble. Yeah. Oh, well, and where is this information? Was it? Did it happen to someone you know? No. You overheard it on the bus? No, it was in, uh, it's in the 14 times. Ah, oh, right. Well, uh, right okay. that's the answer. Good. We've okay. got to the bottom of that. Right, good. Um, <laughs> brilliant. Now, what do you make of David Blunkett accusing gangster rappers of making kids believe guns are cool? It's a hot topic there, Carl, and I imagine you've got some, uh, strong opinions. He's, he's saying what? He is saying, basically, that all this rap music is, uh, advocating gun use and violence against people, and he's very worried about it. Nah. Okay. All right. <laughs> next one. <laughs> Have you thought about going into politics? Because I, I'll tell you this: they wouldn't be able to argue with you, really, in the Houses of Parliament. Uh, have, no, where, where would they start? Yeah, my <laughs> fellow is an idiot. <laughs> yeah. No, but uh, violence has always been about, and it like cowboys and Indians. They didn't have PlayStations and two-pack then, and there was still violence. What do you mean? In the Wild West? Yeah. Do you know what I mean? So you can't really blame it on stuff. It, it'll always happen. That's you know that's the world, and it? it's made up of different types and that. Again, he's right. Again, he's, he's sort of right in a way. In his in his innocence, in his buffoonery. I didn't hear what he said. He just said there's always been violence. You know what I mean? It's sort Even, of like, you know dinosaurs. Look at them. They they caused a lot. And of then trouble. he went too far and made himself yeah. <laughs> sound like a fool again. But I'm just saying, it's always happened. It always.